And now I just gotta work this uh, this harness out of here. We'll see if we can do this with them. Hi, this is Ray with Easy Simple Mechanic. Today we're gonna continue our work on this uh, 70s Toyota forklift. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can try and get this uh, this uh, engine transmission out of this thing so we can see if we can't fix that transmission. So the first thing we're gonna try and do is see if I can uh, get the mast off. Um, anyways, I'm gonna have to repair uh, O-rings on the on the mass cylinder so I might as well see if I can get it off and then we'll try and get this thing rolled into the shop and and get this engine pulled so let's get started the first thing I'm gonna try and do is get these uh, forks off uh, right here but they got these little keepers here on the end I guess so that you don't pull the things off these is easy because it's just got some bolts on it so I can take those off the one on this side they welded a a piece of angle iron on the on the back side of it uh, so I can't get to the bolts so what I'm gonna try and do is possibly just go ahead and take that side off over there and get these forks to slide all the way off on that side so we got these bolts off here and we pulled off the plate now it's to get these off now these have a little lock pin in here that needs to pull up before you can slide these forks off so just pull them off like that now be careful not to smash your fingers the reason i put those on blocks there so it would make it easier to pull these off without having to raise the mast I guess the next thing to do is go ahead and detach these uh, cylinders here off of the, the mast. We'll get those off right here and then we'll have to lean the mast forward so that we can get it unbolted from there. Um, and that's the only thing that holds a mast on other than we're gonna have to remove that hydraulic line which goes back to here so I'm gonna go ahead and and probably work on getting that line loose first uh, before we uh, start to mess with that with the weight of this thing because it ain't light so let me get that hose off and then We'll pull these off. I'll go ahead and get my cherry picker and we'll hook up to it. Uh, so we can try and manage this weight. thinking is that this thing is starting to lean there we go so sorry I didn't get a chance to video that it's kind of hard to be videoing and doing but guys uh, you don't really need to remove this mast to remove the engine 
but since I need to work on that cylinder, I went ahead and took it off. It is a very dangerous proposition if you only are using the cherry picker to do that with. The easiest thing to do is to have either an overhead hoist, if you have a shop, or uh, another forklift and lift it from these hooks that are on the top because that lifts the whole thing up if you need to remove it and then to set it back down that's how you would put it back on now as far as getting it back on i think that's going to be a struggle but anyway uh what i did is once uh once i got it loose uh got these loose on it these two little shocks here uh, I went ahead and leaned it forward so I could get the bolts out I tied a strap to the top here one of these uh, one of these Harbor Freight straps just so that it wouldn't fall on me come come this way towards me then I let it down just enough uh, so that I could get the the bolts out those uh bolts off of those caps that hold it on to the the rear the differential there uh i loosened those as soon as i did that now i had it of course i had the chain on it uh with the cherry picker down here on the bottom so that it allowed me to pick it up and down so i raised it enough to where it came off of the once i pulled the caps off it slid off of those uh little spots where it hooks in uh, then i was able to let it onto the ground with uh, this block of wood here uh, i let it on top of that block so that then i could lean it a little bit and get the strap off the top uh, but before i let the strap off i moved my chain uh, up to the top up there where you see the the top chain there uh, is still hooked up and that also ties the the masts together so that it doesn't slide up and down so i hooked it up there i lifted from that point up in the air a little bit uh, so i could loosen the strap and get the strap off once i got the strap off i used the cherry picker from over there i was able to pull it away from the where it was leaning against the, the tractor there, uh, move it over to the side and then let it all the way down. I put these blocks under it. There's a block over there and a block over here uh, so that I could find the center of gravity. And that's where it's at right now. So I've got this center of gravity here. Uh, so now I can move this with my engine hoist. But yeah, this is a challenge. I don't recommend this for the beginner. And it's, if you're doing this yourself, it's even more of a challenge. So just be careful. This is a, a dangerous situation here without the right uh, stuff. Uh, like I say, don't, don't do like I do <laughs> at home. Don't try this at home, folks. Uh, nonetheless, I got it off. So I'm gonna try and see if I can get it over here on the trailer and just have it hang off the edge so I can work on that cylinder. So we were able to get it on the trailer here and I'm just using the trailer kind of as a workbench for this uh, mast. Um, the idea here is that <clears throat> I'm gonna try and get this, uh, this cap off of here and then pull the cylinder out so that I can get to the seals that are I'm gonna try and replace both the top seal and then when this extends, there's another shaft that comes. There should be another seal on the next cylinder. Uh, you know, because when I was lifting with it originally, it got, oh, I, I think it got to about maybe five feet in the air and then it just started spewing oil out of everything. So, um, I think there's a seal in there that's bad. So I'll, I'll try and fix that, but that'll be later on. Right now, what I think I'm gonna do is I got this guy over here um, that I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, drain the, the differential. And then I got a game plan here that I need to work on to try and see if uh, I can 
get the I'm gonna try and get the top rack off here the top off and pull the back half off I don't know if this piece comes off here on the back uh, but I think it does there's some bolts right here uh, that that hold this on but this is a real heavy piece so I'm gonna try and get that piece off uh, so I can pull the radiator and all of that kind of stuff off I don't want to have to be working within inside here to try and do all that so if I can get that off then uh, I know I'll be able to get the engine to the engine uh, but I may need to turn <coughs> this guy around uh, so that I can get my cherry picker to the engine and all that stuff but uh, we'll see uh, what we do next well folks there's a new development uh, I had been looking at this from the top without the mast. I mean, with the mast on, I couldn't see this and I couldn't crawl under here to see this, but I was trying to figure out how I could get this transmission out without having to pull the engine. And I think I finally figured it out. It looks like right under here, there is a couple of bolts that actually it's a cap that holds this, uh, axle in in there and so for me i think instead of pulling the engine i can just pull this uh differential out and uh this will be a lot easier so the job just got a lot easier i couldn't imagine why they would do that but there has to be a way i kept thinking there's got to be a way to to pull that and uh, it looks like there's some caps right there. So all I have to do is support this uh, frame, set it up on some jack stands or blocks, and then go ahead and pull the brake line uh, off of here. Uh, you know, the, the brake line, the main deal there to get the brake lines off. And then uh, I can go ahead and take those caps off and I will be able to drop that uh, differential out. So I'll go ahead and drain it. Uh, it looks like the reason there's no oil in that transmission or whatever, I don't know, but it looks like they share the oil. This looks like the only filler plug. So this would be the level of the oil all the way into the, the transmission. I, I don't see another uh, filler plug so we'll have to see that whenever uh, whenever we get that out we'll be able to take a look at that but I think I may be able to get this transmission out without pulling the engine if that's the case then that's the the route that I'm gonna go and the other thing uh, I will be hopefully filming something in here let me see somebody asked me a question about wiring the alternator and so i'm gonna have to take some video over there of how that gets uh, wired up so that they can see that but um we'll do that when we get to to that point i gotta do some cleanup in here i gotta change some hoses anyway and do quite a bit here on the engine compartment so i'll take care of that then but for now this changes the whole uh, work plan which is great because now uh, this may save me quite a bit of work um, instead of having to rip that whole back half off we're only gonna have to pull this uh, differential unit out the rear end we'll pull that off or the front end whatever you want to call it on this we'll pull that off and we'll see if we can't get that transmission off uh, with it Okay, so we got the oil drained there and looking at the oil, the oil itself doesn't look too bad. It just was, seems to be a little low. Um, so we'll have to see. Now I'm gonna start off by removing this, uh, this frame here, get this cover off so I can pull the steering column to get it out of my way. Uh, but uh, I think it'll be easier if I pull that cover off so we're going to pull the steering column 
we're gonna pull uh, this piece off and that way I'll have clear access to uh, the transmission and the, the differential so it can come out this way. Um, if we do that, I think that'll be the way to go. To pull this piece, we just took off those two bolts, those two bolts, and then there's a bolt there in the front, or two bolts there. And then we just unplug this wiring harness in here. And now I just gotta work this uh, this harness out of here. We'll see if we can do this with one hand. Okay. Let me see. There we go. All right. So that's that. Okay, so we got the wiring harness done off of there. We're gonna try and uh, and bring that and un undo the wiring. Looks like these were for the lights that were on the up on the mast. So we'll we'll just unwrap that harness and pull it out of the way. Then we'll get to that steering column. We'll pull that. Then we can move on. Before I try and and take this loose, I went ahead and I didn't want to bore you guys, but uh, I went ahead and cleaned all the gunk off of there, years of buildup and grime and whatever, uh, to go ahead and get to the bolts, to be able to get to all the bolts. Uh, the one thing uh, that I forgot to mention earlier is that you have to take these uh, emergency brake cables loose from here there's one on each side right here just uh, basically loosen this nut and then slide those off of there because when that thing drops um, you know if you don't take those loose it, it's gonna be hanging on those emergency brake cables now once they get down there if you need to take them all the way off there's some clips back in in there on the other side of that pin that come off some cotter pins and you can pull those loose and pull those emergency uh, brake cables off. But for now, I'm gonna leave them hooked up and I'm gonna go ahead and try and get this thing uh, loose. Now, one thing I forgot to mention also is that the transmission does have a drain plug. It doesn't have a fill plug, but it has a drain plug. So um, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and drain uh, the other one. So I got it draining right now, and then I'm gonna put the, the cap back in it, and then go ahead and try and get these off. Well, uh, it didn't work out. It looks like, uh, you see there, I took those loose and it dropped about a half inch on both sides. As you can see there, there's a gap, but it doesn't seem to wanna split from the transmission. So what that tells me is there's probably something inside that collar that is uh, that is locking that together so it's keeping it from splitting. There might be a snap ring or something that holds uh, the shafts together or something. So what I may have to do is go ahead and uh, pull the axles and try and drop just the pumpkin part of this and then disassemble that or go ahead and pull the whole thing out like I had planned originally. But uh, we'll have to see uh, if I can either get that loose or I might have to just go ahead and pull the axles. That may be all I get to today. Well, we went ahead and disconnected the steering rod off of the steering shaft or the pitman arm from the steering box and we disconnected these three bolts right here to go ahead and remove the steering column now to remove the steering uh, rod here is there's a cotter pin that goes through the top here you remove that cotter pin and then you have this contraption right here you unscrew that with a screwdriver there's a spring 
that has some tension on this little socket that goes around the ball on the steering uh, rod. I mean, on the steering shaft from the pitman arm. Uh, anyway, it stays locked in. There's one just like this, a little notch on the back side of the steering rod. So you have to turn the steering just enough to get that to come out through the hole, the designated hole on the steering rod in here. Otherwise you won't be able to pop that out. Okay, so that's all uh, that we need to do to get that out. Well folks, I guess that's gonna do it for this episode. Stay tuned to the next episode and we'll see if we can't finish getting that transmission out or tore apart and figure out what we need to do to fix it and get it back in. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and see you next time.